On December 13th, 1999, the Nintendo 64 disk drive was released in Japan, fulfilling a long-standing prophecy to connect Nintendo's game consoles with a dedicated online service called RanNet, and marking the beginning of a new technological era for game consoles. On February 28th, 2001, this console and its network were discontinued. From what public accounts you can find about the DD's existence, it appears to not have done well commercially, with maybe 15,000 units or so being sold. It also seems like it was released just a little bit too late to capitalize on the fervor for that console generation. The PS2 and GameCube were pretty much right around the corner by that point. This disc-based add-on thing did, however, produce a small library of wildly quirky and inventive entries within the Mario Paint lineage, which contains some of the most incredible music I've ever found on the internet. Longtime viewers of this channel might recognize the series' primary composer, Kazumi Totaka, as the current reigning Nasty Lick champion from this Wave Race Lick. Well, it seems like he was given quite a bit of artistic free reign on Mario Artist Polygon Studio, and produced an absolutely wild soundtrack for the entry. There's almost no functional harmony to be found and analyzed. It's almost entirely what I would call avant-groove fusion music, which pushes the limits of sampling and dissonance in a video game soundtrack. So where do we begin? First, let's check out the conceit of the game itself, so we can at least try to understand why Totaka found it so necessary to produce such a hectic score. Many of you might be familiar with Mario Paint. Released for Super Nintendo in the mid-90s, Mario Paint was yet another wild gamble by Nintendo which paid off. In contrast to the platform-style action of the mainline Mario games, this was a creative toolkit with which Super Nintendo owners could draw, make music, and just generally produce all kinds of Kid Pick style artistic mayhem at their console. Today, it's probably most known for electronic musicians creating elaborate arrangements with its music editor. Anyway, Nintendo released a successor to Mario Paint in the form of Mario Artist for N64DD. Polygon Studio is among the successors to Mario Paint, and as the name suggests, this is the entry where you get to sculpt characters and vehicle models and other kinds of nonsense out of masses of polygon. Totaka seems to be Nintendo's spacey, creative game composer-in-chief. Given his role scoring Mario Paint, Animal Crossing, Mario Artist, Wii Music, all that kind of stuff. And to me, this is his masterpiece among those. Totaka made some very simple but very quirky melodies with tons of character, almost like he's breaking the music down into bizarre tinker toy pieces. Right from the title screen, it feels as though Totaka is making a clear that this game will feature creative synthesis and tones that don't simply emulate acoustic instruments. also makes it clear that compositionally, this soundtrack will be full of very short but quirky bursts of music that don't necessarily follow common song form, or even functional harmony. This section of the title music features a single two-note phrase, which is copy and pasted up by intervals of a minor third. Building a melody that stacks minor thirds can add a bizarre sort of urgent sense to the music, and we call this type of sound diminished. The main menu features a song that's surprisingly urgent for a main menu. It's almost like you've arrived at a laboratory that's short-circuiting. Anyway, from this menu, you can navigate to a few cryptically indicated modes, such as simple. Here, Totaka took a completely different approach and composed a song seemingly based off of obscure samples, many of which are vocal samples. I guess you would call this the inventory menu, and here they reused a theme from Mario Paint, which is constructed with intervals of fourths. In fact, both the title screen and inventory menu use the interval of a fourth as the basis of their melody structure. Western music is quite often composed by producing chords out of intervals of thirds, so using these as a basis usually sounds a bit more out. In stark contrast to the grooviness of the previous locations, this area features some extremely relaxing jazz performed by a warbly synth.
When you get to the actual raw 3D modeling portion of the game, Totaka provides two songs of the aforementioned avant groove fusion variety. In this first tune, he seems to have composed a very cheerful Mario-ish melody and then reharmed it with darker chords and bass notes. And this second tune is like a straight up hip hop instrumental. This stuff grooves insanely hard and it's honestly wild how much he nails this style. And here's a nice treat, Kazumi Totaka scored the beta material which eventually became WarioWare. As it turns out, Nintendo tested out the micro game concept in Polygon Studio, complete with a bunch of the very same games that appear in WarioWare. Accordingly, Totaka composed a bunch of micro arrangements in different styles of a couple micro tunes for this section. In the mid-90s, a few years before Polygon Studio, Totaka used the pseudonym Liberal Music to release this album. Throughout this EP, he experiments with quite a few similar production techniques which you find later on in his N64 work, especially when it comes to sample-heavy, jazzy hip-hop stuff. And after hearing this album, it's hard not to feel that maybe the music he composed for the Mario Artist package specifically is actually much closer to his voice as an artist than some of his other projects. Another fun place to look when seeking more of Kazumi Totaka's personal style is the band's Spiritual Vibes, where he plays mallet instruments and various keyboards, as well as taking on compositional duties. Possibly out of all the video game soundtracks I have researched, Polygon Studio strikes me as the one that most closely reflects the artistic vision of the composer, as opposed to simply being a soundtrack for a game, especially having now taken a dive into Totaka's personal discography. So now that I've established this hunch of mine, let's check out some of the weirder, more sound design oriented stuff that he composed for this. This soundtrack has inspired me musically in a ton of ways already, and has influenced the way I analyze music on this channel. I hope that you've also found something in it to be fascinated by. I would also like to massively thank YouTuber Quinn Phoenix for allowing me to use a bunch of their Polygon Studio footage, and I highly recommend watching them cruise through the N64 DD Mario Artist collection. And finally, I would like to massively thank all of the patrons from the BitBlitz Patreon for supporting these types of videos. I've been a musician my whole career, and for obvious reasons, the last few years have been some of the absolute toughest. I literally would not be able to prioritize making MIDI School for Jazzbots videos if it weren't for everybody's support and interest, so thanks to everybody who's been enjoying and interacting with these. As for the next BitBlitz video, I do have something coming up that I haven't done before on this channel, and I really hope y'all enjoy that when that drops. As always, have a dope week.